Yeah, you have a question. I do. Um, are we taking any increase on our bed tax right now at that 3%? Is that off the table at 3% stays? Uh, this this council can put any number they want out there. Well, if it's got to go to the public no matter what. Now, one, a, a full cent on bed tax would probably generate about $125,000. Am I in the ballpark? I think it's closer to two hundred. Where's Mark? Is he? What is the 1% on, on bed tax? Generate about $175,000, $200,000? Yeah, it, it'd be, um, it's about 20, uh, $22 million a year in taxable activity, so it'd be about two hundred twenty one percent Okay, so 1%. That would be your number if we if we left everything else alone uh, and added a, a full cent to the bed tax. Now, keep this in mind: the uh, when we increase the bed tax to three percent in in 2007, uh, and that was effective on January 1st, 2008. Uh, that continued the the process. Of the when we imposed the bed tax, uh, there was three efforts at bed tax. The first one was in uh, June 26, '87, and uh, we authorized a dollar a room tax to be used for tourism. Then later in that same year, in December, we revoked that ordinance and we set the bed tax at two percent, and the public voted on it. And it was a split between tourism and development. Of recreational facilities. At that moment in time, we were trying to increase our ball fields and, and all of the recreational area. Then, in uh, 19th of December in 2000, we revoked that ordinance and we reset. We set the bed tax again at two percent, but split it between tourism and recreation. Okay. And then, uh, then January 1st, uh, effective January 1st, 2008, we set percent. <coughs> now. None of these percentages were set in concrete. So there has been a judgment of, of the council since that time to determine what percent of the bed tax went to parks and recreation and or uh, tourism. Now, if we go back to the, what I would call the original intent, and if that was 50-50, and 50% of the bed tax went to parks and recreation, that's the existing 3%, that would give some relief to the general fund that where Parks and Recreation is getting the majority of their funding now. So if we devoted 50% to truly to tourism development and the other 50% to Parks and Recreation, I think that would give some relief to general fund for our Parks and Recreation Department. But uh, already this year, uh, I think we have commitments of three major tournaments. We we have an opportunity to take Prescott backwards to a point that it can become the softball capital of the world again. We give up that for, for several years, and you remember when it was we you were bet. the softball Here. capital of the world. So uh, uh, the, the, the future's in our hands of what we decide to do with uh, the opportunities that we have in Prescott, Arizona to utilize the assets we have and make them produce income. I, I see it uh, that we need uh, to move over a little bit from thinking as government people and start thinking as, as the private sector and, and taking the advantage of opportunities where there is a, a marketing uh, potential. Hey Mary, thank you. One last question for city manager. We took that bed tax and split it out and the half went to PNR and half went to PAC. Parks and Rec, but even the money that went to Parks and Rec was let out again to certain nonprofits as to what they did, whether it be the courthouse lighting, it was the Elks, it was the Arts Humanities. How are you going to deal with those organizations depending on how you take this on in-house with your tourism? Well, I think it depends on the, on the funding approach. Uh, you know, if, if we're getting an additional million dollars a year, I think you're going to see a lot less stress on trying to come up with money for the rodeo or for uh, the arts or the, the trade.
tree lighting uh, plaza. So again, I think you know if you if you said let's just raise bed tax another one or two percent, uh, that's not going to get you near the amount of money so that we can run an effective organization along with some of these other uh, entities. Or you make the decision not fund them. I mean, but there has been a you know a precedent set. Not that it can't you know be stopped, but you know there is an expectation out there, and we we saw that last Tuesday on some of those funding. Uh, you know, the conversations I've had with some of the hoteliers, you know, about raising that, because 5% bed tax is not uncommon. I think there's even a city or two in the state that are at 6%. But the common response I get is, why do you continue to run tourism on the backs of us, the hoteliers? We all benefit from tourism. And then when you take it just to the, to the, the board and booze, then it's like, why do you just totally do it on the restaurant, bars, and hoteliers? You know, you can't tell me that the Llama House or the shops in the <coughs> court, they're not benefiting from tourism. So if tourism is, is important as, as a city, then we all need to help shape them. So, you know, it kind of depends on the group you talk to. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Joe? Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Woodfield, I'm sure glad you showed up today. Um, what do we spend on economic development a year in the community for developing economic development? Uh, I, I don't have that with me, but I That'd be a nice step for no. Acknowledging the fact that not everything in the city of Prescott is tourism based. At one time we had information that indicated possibly as many as one in four jobs were impacted by tourism. And, you know, that means three in four are not. And we also have infusions of revenue into the area from a very uh, accelerated retirement community. Uh, we have a lot of folks here that uh, bring money here from whether they're military retirement or corporate retirement or whatever it is that come in there. So I, I, I would put out there that sometimes we get bogged down uh, thinking that we're, we're a tourism-driven city. Now, in fact, the, the desire of the council as a whole is, is to use tourism as an economic uh, development tool. It would be sort of nice to know at what level we're, we're, we're spending money on economic development right now. Um, evidently, we didn't spend it well enough because we haven't developed economic development either. Um, I, I, I'd like to know that. And I would suggest that instead of uh, raising taxes, we don't raise taxes. Maybe we spend the taxes that we're collecting differently um, maybe the way we're spending them has been ineffective, and maybe there's a better way to approach this rather than just run right out and say, let's raise taxes. I'm not quite sure that I agree with that. Anyone else? Okay, uh, let's uh, go ahead and go to the public. Uh, I know there's uh, people that individually uh, want to express your opinion for yourself, and I know that there's uh, folks here that are going to be representing organizations. So. Uh, uh, if you'll identify yourself and, and if you represent yourself or an organization, if you're representing, representing an organization, why uh, uh, there's a little extra time. So we 